Hey everybody, this is Mr. McKee again with Net125. Today I'm going to go over Lab 7.2.7 .7, and I'm going to try to use Packet Tracer to set up the devices even though it says to use a PC and a uh, Cisco 2960 switch with 15.2 image. All right, but we're going to see how this works with Packet Tracer. All right, notice there is 18 questions to answer in this lab and notice how these um, devices are set up. All right. So let's go ahead and look at the addressing table. We've got a switch labeled S1, uh, set up a VLAN 1 interface with that IP address, circuit mask, and PCA, and set all that up. All right. So every device on a Ethernet LAN is identified by a layer 2 MAC address. This address is assigned by the manufacturer and stored in the firmware of the NIC. This lab will explore and analyze the components that make up a MAC address and how you can find this information on a switch and PC. You will cable the equipment as shown in the topology. You will configure the switch and PC to match the addressing table. You will verify your component uh, configurations by testing it for network connectivity. After the devices have been configured and network connectivity is verified, you will use various commands to retrieve information from the devices to answer questions about your network equipment. Uh, note the switches used are Cisco Catalyst 2960 with the iOS version 15.22, the LAN base K9 image, and the K9 does it, it has cryptographical stuff in it, so you can, you know, do stuff like that. Um, issue keys and things, or set up uh, secure keys like that. Uh, for SSH and things like that. Uh, other switches in Cisco iOS versions can be used depending on the model in Cisco iOS version. The commands available and the output produced might meet, might vary from what is shown in the labs. Make sure that switches have been erased and no start and have no start configurations. If you are uns unsure, ask your instructor. All right, so you need a switch, PC, console cable, and Ethernet cables as shown in the topology. Scroll down. All right. Looks kind of like a long lab, but actually it's a lot of images and text. So probably the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a 2960 switch, which if you on a packet tracer workspace, uh, if you can see that, I know it's kind of small, but clicking on switches and then 2960 is right there. Click on the screen. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. All right, zoom in is what is control I. Control I, control I, control I. All right, control I, control I. Yeah, it's big enough, I think. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a PC. So I'm going to click on end devices, and then I'm going to click PC. Put it about right there. All right, um, first thing I'm gonna do is come in here and this is just a label that doesn't change the config at all, but I'll make that S1 to make it look right. Same thing with this, make this PC A. Whoops, try to make it exactly the same. All right, the capital A, all right, there we go. That looks pretty similar. All right, now cabling wise, we want to go in here and get a lightning bolt. Uh, we're going to switch to, to end device, so copper straight through. Click on here, make sure you click fast ethernet 06, and then drag it over here. And PC only has one uh, NIC card, so fast ethernet zero is all we can pick. You can do a fast forward time if you want. All right. It's connected. All right. Now let's continue on. All right. So in this part, you set the network topology and configure basic settings, such as the interface IP address and device name. For device name and address information, refer to the topology and addressing table. Okay. 
So cable the network is shown in topology. I did that. Attach the devices shown in topology and cable is necessary. Got that going. Power on all devices. These are on by default, but we can look at them if we want. I think you can do that. I know this is on, but I don't think I can turn it off. The switch, I can go in here. So I can't turn it off. So that's there. All right, power on the device. We've got that. Configure the IP version four address on the PC. Configure the IP address. Submit mask and default gateway. Address for PCA. All right, so go up here and right here. I'm going to go to desktop PC config. All right, my IP address is 192.168.1.3. Submit mask, tab down, and that automatically fills that in. That's correct. Uh, default gateway is 192.168.1.1. All right, don't have DNS info. All right. So from the command prompt on PCA, I'll close that down, I'll make sure that's right. All right, command prompt, the switch address, let's see. So 192.168.1.2, oops. I just wait for it to do its thing. All right. All right, so it timed out. All right, so back down here, were the ping successful? Explain. Well, they shouldn't have been. And the reason being, we have it's there there's no Nothing's been configured on the S1 yet. All right, so go in here. Step three, configure basic settings for the switch. In this step, you will configure the device name and the IP address and disable DNS lookup on the switch. Uh, console into the switch and console into the switch. So like if you notice here, if we do this, terminal, notice nothing happens, all right? Reason being, we don't have a console cable hooked up, all right? So if we go down here to the console, click that on there, RS-232. Click that to the switch to the console port. All right, now we have a console port. I wish that was on the top, but whatever. All right, now we go in here and click on our desktop terminal. All right, notice how we have a we have like a electrical connection, not a network connection, but electrical connection to the switch. Notice our switch version is 12.2. That shouldn't be an issue, and that says it wants you to use 15.2, I think. What was it? 15.22. All right, where were we at? Right here. All right, so let's boot it up. All right, let's go to privilege exec. Get a config terminal. All right. Assign the host name to the switch based on the addressing table. So host name S1. Notice how the global config mode changes to S1 is the name. <clears throat> Alright, didn't disable DNS lookup. Alright, no IP 
Hello IP domain. Look up. All right. So now if you type a command in, it's not gonna it's not gonna search for that thing that's an IP uh, host. All right, so that works out good. All right, now we're gonna set up our SVI interface. So we're able to connect to a switch over the network. And also we're able to ping that switch to make sure we have connection. All right, so we do interface VLAN 1. All right, IP address. 192.168.1.2 space 255.255.255.0. All right, got to turn it on so no shutdown. All right, and all right now ping from the ping the switch from PCA. Not in the terminal though, because you'll be pinging it. So, go to command prompt, ping 192.168.1.2. Just let it do its thing. All right, were the ping successful now? All right, you can answer that. Every device on an Ethernet LAN has a MAC address that is assigned by the manufacturer and stored in the firmware of the NIC. Ethernet MAC addresses are 48 bits long. They are displayed using six sets of hexadecimal digits. Uh, they are usually separated by dashes, columns, or periods. The following examples show the same MAC address using three different no notation methods. All right, so you'll see it like that. You'll see it with colons. You'll see it. Some of these are combined together. All right. Most MAC addresses are also called physical addresses, hardware addresses, or Ethernet hardware addresses. Uh, you will issue commands to display the MAC addresses on a PC in a switch and analyze the properties of each one. All right. So analyze the MAC address for PCA NIC. Before you analyze the MAC address on PCA, look at the example from a different PC NIC. You can issue the IP config all command to view the MAC address of your PC of your NIC. An example. Screen output is shown below. When using the IP config all command, notice that the MAC addresses are referred to as physical addresses. Reading the MAC address from left to right, the first six hex digits refer to the vendor, the manufacturer of the device. These first six hex digits, three bytes, are also known as the organizational uni unique identifier or OUI. This three byte code is signed by the vendor by the IEEE organization. To find the manufacturer, use the keywords IEEE, IEEE IOU standards to find an OUI lookup on the internet or navigate to standards right there, that link, to find the registered OUI vendor codes. The last six digits are the NIC serial number assigned by the manufacturer. All right, use the following output from the IP config all command, answer the following questions. All right, so it's showing an ethernet adapter. All right, the description right there. It's an Intel gigabit network adapter. Physical direct address or MAC address is there. All right, uh, DHCP is enabled, auto config is enabled. It's assigned a link local IP version 6 address, there's the DHCP assigned IP address, subnet mask, the lease, when the lease was obtained from the DHCP server, right, when it expires, and the default gateway. All right.
what is the OUI portion of the MAC address for this device? Remember, it's the first three octets. What is the serial number portion? All right. And then it's right there. The last six digits, the NIC, the serial number assigned by the manufacturer. All right. Using the example above, find the name of the vendor that manufactured this NIC. Well, you can probably tell by that little screenshot, but if you go to, let's see. Since I use Wireshark quite often, they have a Wireshark OUI lookup, which is fine. Let's see. All right. I'll make this a little bit smaller. Let's see, right here. All right. And that tells you stuff like we already knew. Different ways of MAC addresses are displayed. All right, so find the name of the vendor that manufactured this NIC. You should be able to do this. Control C, Control V. All right, find. All right, it tells you right here. So that right there should be the answer. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right. From the command prompt on PCA, issue the IP config all command and identify the OUI portion of the MAC address for the NIC of PCA. So let's do IP config all. All right, notice right here, there's our physical address. And notice it's chunked together each two sets of the um, octets. Link local uh, IP version 4 address. Doesn't have an IP version 6 address, but it has the address that we specified, subnet mask. Default gateway is not specified in there. Well, specified right there. All right, no DHCP server, and that is about it. No DNS. All right, so So let's see, identify the serial number portion of the MAC address for the NIC on PCA. All right, remember the last three sets of octets, so it'd be that. What is the name of the vendor that manufactured the NIC on PCA? If you guys are using your own PCs, which you probably don't have a switch to configure, but let's do the lookup again. <clears throat> oh, where did it go? Did I shut it down, maybe? So it wants the name of the vendor, so that would be the first three octets. So if you do like this, you know, it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to do 00-0B. Zero, zero, I'm sorry, 0B-BE. All right. And notice right there, it's coming up with Cisco systems. <clears throat> okay. All right. Analyze the MAC address for S1F 
06 interface. You can use a variety of commands to display MAC addresses on the switch. Uh, console into S1. So if we go back here, do the terminal. All right. Privileged exec mode. All right. And use the show interfaces VLAN 1. VLAN 1. All right. Notice we know we're on the right track because there's our IP address we set up. And if we look through here, some more hardware is CPU interface address is right there. So, what is the MAC address for VLAN 1 on S1? All right, right there. What is the MAC serial number? That would be the last three sets. All right, so what does BIA stand for? Burned in address. All right, notice right here. That's the MAC address, and it says BIA and it's the same. All right, another way to display the MAC address is it on the switch is to use show arp command. So let's do a show arp. Use the show command to display the MAC address information. The this command maps the layer two address to its corresponding layer three address. A sample is shown below. Use output generated by your switch to answer the questions. All right, but there it is right there. Notice these are different than what I have. What layer two addresses are displayed on S1? Gotta make for well. Can't really zoom in. I don't know if that helps you out any, but The 192.168.1.2 is 0002.17b7.da12 and the MAC address for 192.168.1.3 is 0002.bede.00e6. All right. And the first one corresponds to 192.168.1.2, and the second one corresponds to 192.168.1.3. So it asks what layer three two addresses, which that's your MAC addresses, and the layer three addresses are your IP addresses. All right. Issue the show MAC address table. All right, and notice, did the switch display the MAC address on the PCA? If you answered yes, what port is it on? Mine didn't display it. All right. All right, and what I did to make something show up right there, See if I can ping 
looking to. All right, zero zero e six. All right, now notice that PC2's MAC address did show up after I I went ahead and pinged it from the um, from the console of S1. Now it shows up. And let me do this just to be sure. Um, there's a re6. Yep, that was the that's the MAC address of PCA. So until it discovers all those MAC addresses. It's not going to show up. All right, and all right, you can either use this included uh, show MAC address table that they have listed here, or you can use your actual uh, what I had in there to answer that and display what port, port it's on. All right, reflection questions. Can you have broadcast at the layer two level? If so, what would the MAC address be? All right, if you have ARP requests going out, you can have broadcast at layer two and they'll be all, all Fs, right? So ff.ff.ff.ff.ff.ff.ff. All right. And why would you need to know the MAC address of a device? Well, it makes it easier to find it in case something's not communicating. And if something like if something happens and maybe hackers in your network, you can actually figure out you know, if that was one of your machines or that's an outside machine based on the OUI and the serial number, because you can find that literal, literally find that exact um, device based on the um, MAC address. All right, but that's what it, unless it's spooked, unless he spooked it, made it up. But anyways, that's it for that lab. I know, you know, I'm going to include this packet tracer with um, in the submission link so you guys will have it just in case you want it but yeah that's basically how you do that all right thanks for watching